सर्वे 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 पश्यन्तु भावे ओम शांति 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 नमस्कार गुड आफ्टरनून आप स्पीक आई शुड मेक ए डिस्क्लेमर नो यू माइट हैव नोटिस आई एम द ओनली मैन ओनली पर्सन हैविंग ए मास्क सो आई हैव अ थ्रोट इंफेक्शन सो इफ आई कफ वन टू ट्वाइस तो प्लीज बियर विथ मी आ थैंक यू सो मच आ दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस has enormous significance for me as a scholar as a professor of conflict resolution so i'll speak about that briefly about maybe one or two minutes then i will go into the main topic so about myself look at so i have two phd degrees in conflict resolution from jawaharlal nehru university and university of massachusetts and in fact at the hindu university of america i am part of this university many many millennia ago perhaps not just uh, in a degraded way so i started conflict and peace studies program at the hindu university of america and i organized some conferences under that program and at present i am offering two courses two graduate courses hindu conflict resolution and arthar shastra and some of my students I, i don't call them students i call them co learners or co workers in the path of knowledge so they will be presenting uh, now and some other academics and my main goal is because i am trained in kind of western education system so how to bring dharmic ideas how to bring those great ideas to the mainstream academic disciplines particularly social sciences so these are some of my publications you know i don't want to uh, talk too much about that and at present i'm working on a book on dharmic conflict resolution and i'm, I'm working on that it will take a couple of years to have uh, to see the light of the day so so why this panel uh so i i just mentioned that i teach a course on arthashastra and we have when this conference came they, they announced the conference and we had a robust discussion in the class because arthashastra i mean we, we are still exploring has enormous potential for conflict resolution so so we will talk about that in fact that is the whole goal of this panel because i believe that the great ideas or perennial ideas they are not confined to one history one time one period they are significant for all all times so why how arthas shastra as a conflict resolution document or shastra is significant today so that is kind of the motive of this panel we are here today so So let me uh, talk a couple of minutes about why I think, uh, as, a, as a scholar, as a professor, as a learner, why it is important. Why we, we need to study the Arthur Shastra. Right? So there are a lot of misperceptions or misunderstandings about Arthur Shastra from the dominant Western academics. And this is the fact. I'm not making doubt. This is the fact. For example, Max Weber, the famous German sociologist, in his speech, which is called "Politics as a Vocation," so he calls Arthur Shastra radical Machiavellianism, or or he compares this to 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 books, and he says Machiavelli's prince is harmless in comparison to uh, Arthur Shastra. Uh, I don't know if you know about Machiavelli. Machiavelli was an Italian diplomat thinker. He came around uh, late uh, 15th century, early 16th century. He is considered one of the uh, strategists, uh, strategic thinker, and he kind of 
advised all kind of means for the king to maintain the kingdom or to expand the kingdom. Right? She talks about fox, lion, how to be feared, how to be loved, all those kind of things. And he came much, much, much later than Cotillia, right? almost about 2,000 years, almost about one, one maybe after, after many, many years. Okay. And there's another scholar, Stuart Gray, he, he calls Artha Sastra as it's about Brahminical realism. And he talks about it justifies overly brutal repression. Okay. So, so if you look at, I'm not reading all, all the all the uh, uh, quotes, but if you look at it, so they see Artha Sastra as something, a document which is vile, which is vicious, kutil as a kutil. No, Kutil is a shrewd, cunning Brahmin, and he has nothing to do with the ethics, morality, spirituality. It's all about war, repression, killing, and all those kind of things. So that, that's kind of major narrative. You, you come across the major academic disciplines dealing with Arthasastra. So the work we have here as scholars at the university to address that misunderstanding to 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 uh, counter that narrative in an academic scholarly way and that's why we are here today so so this i call this is from book nine uh, i think asa sastra has 15 books uh, and this is from book nine and i call it defining statement of asa sastra why i call it so before that, let me read the quote. Material gain, spiritual good, and pleasures, this is the trial of gain. Of that, it is better to attain each earlier one in preference to each later one. So what it is trying to say is that, so there is a kind of dominant thinking that money is something not good. If you, if you are a spiritual seeker, Material things are not good. I mean, you should renounce everything, go to Nirvana or something, you know. Uh, so, but Arthasastra challenges that narrative. He says, no, money, you need money, you need it matter, right? It's like, otherwise, it is like you are building a castle in the air without matter. How, how to build a spiritual life without the world? Right? We are not talking about ghosts, we are talking about the people, right? So Cotillia challenges that narrative, right? And so that I call the central statement of Cotillian philosophy that for a spiritual life, and, and that, that narrative is going on in India now, if you look at uh, the Pericari Institute of Defense Analysis and Studies in Delhi, they are doing a lot of conferences now. So they're talking about India, not only as a spiritual power, Vishwa Guru, but also a material power. India has developed not only spiritually, but also economically, politically. Right. And that is, I think, the central key argument of, of Kotilya in his Asa Sastra. And I found some of the parallel arguments made by Sri Aurobindo. Uh, in fact, he wrote a book. He, he talks about the four powers. And matter, material force, money is one power out of four powers. So he talks about all life yoga, and Swami Vivekananda talks about practical Vedanta, right? So that's the saying that Bhukhe Pet Harina, you cannot bhajan, make bhajan about Hari, right? So that, that's kind of, you know, so when people say, no, 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 we don't need money, material things, Kotila says, no, you need that so that you can make spiritual, spiritual progress as well. So, so the narrative I just talked, talked about in the beginning that Kutililian king is a vicious, corny, shrewd king. He's not ethical, he's immoral kind of thing. But if you look at the Arthasastra book, the, 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 the text itself, right, there are many, many uh, sentences which talk about how the king must be ethical. Right? So for example, he talks about three gunas the Kotilian king must have abhigamika. It means the king must, be, must have attractive qualities. He must inspire confidence. Uh, he must be pious, truthful. 
he must have prajna guna uh, he must be intelligent and he must have, he must have utsaha guna okay and, and for the training of the king for the binaya he talks about uh, study of anishike or philosophical sciences he talks about uh, throwing and he talks about bartha economics so the so king must be have in depth knowledge and wisdom in all sciences not only about uh, how to rule but also about philosophy spiritual sciences uh, dandaniti and everything so so there's a kind of one can draw a parallel between uh, kutilian king with plato's philosopher king but we are not talking about that now but one can make definitely make a kind of parallel argument with plato's philosopher king and kutilus says besides learning the ruler must exercise control over his senses i would talk about sadari book kama krodha lova mohammad master sadari right. so kutilus also talks about that king also must indriya vijay indriya jay like he must control uh, his senses and these are two uh, important quotes from artha shastra one so he talks about uh that, that how the king must control his senses right talks about lust anger and let me read one no, not two i just read one uh statement lust means the favoring of evil persons anger the suppression of good persons because of the multitude of evils re- resulting from lust and anger both are uh, both are held to be calamity so this is the kutilian king not the king uh pointed out by the other scholars in the beginning i was talking about and he also talks about moral guide the brahmin if you look at kotla's durga i think we talked about that in the class there's a place for temple inside that durga there's a place for brahmin for purohita because purohita must be a moral guide when the king needs it and these two terms i found very important in in kutilian scheme of governance particularly he talks about satya and sapatha right and none of the in my knowledge in my knowledge none of the western scholars studying artha shastra or kutilya talk about these two satya and sapatha kutilya talks about that so in the in the book 7 he talks about that Plighting one's troth or taking an oath is an unstable pact. A surety or a hostage is stable. Say the teachers. So if you look at Arthur Shastra, it's, it's a kind of dialogue. Kurt Killer talks about Sukracharya, Brihaspati, all the great scholars, sages, and he counters when, he, when it is needed. Right. So he says no. He says plighting one's troth. or taking an oath is a pact stable in the next world as well as here right. so kotilya says in the famous saying in hindi pran jaye magar vachan na jaye right. so if you give a word if you take a promise vow you must keep it right. i mean if you, i mean if you break it you, you can escape in this world but in the next world there there will be consequences right. and so again there is a lot of debate going on and i i was thinking about hostages in israel palestine you no know, uh hamas taking hostages of israel and that thing going on debate that was coming to my mind but i'm not talking about that now uh so for kotilya ethical prince that, that's kind of main argument i'm making here ethics morality virtue they have prominent place in kotilian scheme of rulership leadership and governance so again this is very important i want to talk about that so whenever there is war 
open war or prakash yuddha that cordelia talks about all these kind of people those must be spared from killing he talks about patita pranamukha abhipanna mukta kesha mukta sharastra bhayavirupa avidhama so all kind of people in a war so how much kind of ethical war one can expect if you, if you look at this statements from the beginning from the western scholars right so all these people must be spared whenever there is war this this is typical cotillion ethical war so this is the i think last slide i have because i want others to speak this is this is a long quote and i'm not reading the whole one this is from kangle rp kangle uh, one of the authoritative a uh, scholar on on kotilya so he makes a comparison between uh talks about alexander and, and when alexander was you no know, the warrior the greek warrior so he was killing people the cities were razed to the ground male population put to the sword women and children sold into slavery right and if you look at chandragupta maurya the student of uh arthashastra no i sometimes think uh, you know in modern terms kotilya was a professor of political science i'm i'm also professor of political science but i'm not kotilya but he was a professor of the largest university of that time it was uh, takshashila university right and his student was chandragupta maurya for us for the most ethical king right and when the narrative comes kotilya was kotila most cunning most shrewd on ethical that kind of that kind of challenge i think we we need to take as cotillion scholars at in the university of america so so this this is my last slide so so we are here not not only talk about artha shastra but as hindu scholars with shraddha in hindu uh, scriptures uh, a uh, wealth of wisdom we need to bring that to beer to mainstream to the mainstream academic disciplines in in our own way and we are still exploring you no know, we are, in our class we are still exploring the relevance of kotilya and arthashastra so the profound 